What would a scientifically accurate The Lost World Jurassic Park look like? Well, starting with the Compsognathus, here's a surprise. You might expect me to tell you that Compsognathus was covered in feathers. Well, the scaly depiction has the potential to actually be correct. We have found potential evidence of scales on its legs and tail, so we can assume that some parts of the body were feathered, while perhaps the legs and tail were scaly. I think a mix of feathers and scales is likely. Compsognathus was not able to deliver venom like in the movies, so that for sure is an inaccuracy. The concept that they hunted in packs is also very unlikely, along with the ongoing pronated wrist problem. So I don't know how they would be portrayed as aggressive in real life, given that they didn't hunt in packs, nor did they deliver venom. Next up is Stegosaurus. There's not much wrong with the Stegosaurus, but its size is slightly exaggerated, and its tail posture is wrong. Other than that, it's a pretty good Stegosaurus depiction. I like how they were portrayed as dangerous, not peaceful, like most herbivores in this franchise. Parasaurolophus. There are a few inaccuracies of this Parasaurolophus, just its neck position, upright stance, and jaw motion. But we barely see it, so whatever. But hey, at least it got more screen time than it did in the first Jurassic Park movie. Next up is Pachycephalosaurus. The posture here is off, and it's more kangaroo-like than the real-life one. It's a bit smaller than the real-life ones, too, along with having four fingers instead of five. Its head dome is shown to be a bit too spiky as well. Triceratops. The same stuff I said for the first movie applies here. There's the elephant feet, head proportions, and frill appearance, but we get to see it destroy that tent, which is cool. Now for the Gallimimus, these ones are also featherless and have pronated hands, along with having teeth. Real Gallimimus had toothless beaks, but you barely see Gallimimus in this movie, so it doesn't really matter much. For Mementisaurus, well, it's sad that this fellow was barely in the movie. Unfortunately, it was kind of just a stretched out version of the Brachiosaurus from the first movie, which means it has similar inaccuracies. Its body proportions, head shape, and neck posture are off. It also has those elephant feet and the nostrils are on top of the head, instead of closer to the snout. Personally, I find it annoying that it's not phased by the fact that there's a stampede at its feet. I feel like a Mementosaurus would try to kick the animals out of the way. Tyrannosaurus. The hands again. That's one thing. It's also pretty shrink-wrapped and lacks lips. This is a problem with the original Tyrannosaurus too, but I forgot to mention that. The San Diego scene also showcases its speed, which, like in the first movie, is exaggerated. Junior, the baby Tyrannosaurus, is fully scaled, but we think baby Tyrannosauruses may have had feathers and the amount reduced as they grew up. Another issue is the loud stomping. Instead, it had padded feet. Well, that's all I'm doing for today. Be sure to stay tuned for part two.